And we're back. You're listening to Radio Nation. My name is Andrew Phillips, filling in for the now absent Nick Pascot, who's off doing bigger and better things up in North Vancouver. I'm joined live in studio by a producer from Toronto, Ontario, Jay Staffs. Hey, what's going on? Not much, man. What's happening? I'm having a great time just hanging out here with you. <laughs> Sounds good, man. <laughs> uh, so what have you been up to lately? Um, just working a lot. Uh, trying to help people, I suppose, with their... Uh, social networking, helping a lot of artists and stuff like that. Fair enough. And um, I'm just doing what I know best, which is which is the music. So, all um, right. Yeah. Uh, for listeners out there who don't kn- who don't know who Jay Staffs is, in 15 or less words, describe who you are. I'm a kid from Brampton, who's very passionate about his work, which is music. Fair enough. I think that was 17, but I think we'll let it go. That's okay. Uh, for those of you who are listening in, you also should know that I'm not actually adding in the piano in the background when Jay Staff speaks. That's actually the people just outside our studio, so that's not like an effect that I'm adding in. Just, I was going to ask you what just that was going on. <laughs> just, just FYI. I was going to say, I was like, that me, no? No, no, no. That'd be awesome if you could talk in piano. Like if you were that just talking. That would be scary. Yeah. Uh, More scary than awesome, but probably scary. I don't know. I'm kind of torn. I think that'd be awesome. Whoever's playing is pretty good. Fair enough. <laughs> um, now, you mentioned that you're helping a lot of people with... Uh, with their social networking, and we will get to that because mm-hmm. I know that you're absolutely huge with social media. But I want to take yeah. a I want to take a trip back in time, okay. to to when you first got started and how how you first got involved with music. Um, um, um okay. Well, back in the day, my dad he uh, he used to DJ. Um, he used to DJ house parties. Well, well, house parties at our house all the time. He would DJ for weddings and and like uh, just like community events, I guess, for his friends. Um, so there's always music in my house. Um, my mom has been singing forever, um, and there's a lot of musical influence on both sides of my family. Like my mom's brothers and sisters sing, my dad's brothers and sisters sing. Fair it's enough. like it's kind of weird. Like my mom has actually had my mom used to be like an R&B artist. She had like um, a couple of singles like that were released in the Caribbean. Okay. Um, and my dad has always been into music. And my grandfather, actually, um, was the first person in St. My parents are from St. Kitts and Nevis in the Caribbean. My grandfather was the first person in St. Kitts and Nevis to tune a steel. To tune a steel. Okay. Um, That's so, cool. So, yeah. So I'm like <laughs> just kind of like carrying it on, you know. It's, it's kind of weird. It just kind of fell in my lap um, as far as the music thing goes. Uh, I started playing piano when I was seven. My mom put me in class, piano lessons, and I used to kick and scream and not want to practice and she used to like <laughs> actually sit beside me with like a stick like a wooden stick and anytime i would mess up she would hit my hands wow so i got really good really fast <laughs> <laughs> I bet. um and uh and that's basically it i've l- i learned like you know chord progressions like really i just re- i remember being like 12 or 13 and making up just anything like i would learn chords i guess you can say like just whatever c major F major, G major, whatever, and I would sit there and play, and then I would add to it more, and then I would add to it and add to it, and the more that I would sit there and do that, the more that I would learn, I guess, how to kind of, I was composing, really. Fair enough. But I was 12. I didn't know that I was composing. I didn't, I just thought, it, it was fun to me, because playing, you know, playing Tutti Frutti was more fun than playing, you know, Chavalsky. Fair enough, You know what yeah. I mean? So, like, yeah. I would sit there, and I would be like, oh, I want to play... The new, like the new, you know, Biggie song that's on the radio. So I would learn how to play it, teach myself by ear how to play it, and that kind of taught me. I was like, you know, subliminally teaching myself how to create music. But um, to me, it was like more of a challenge. I was like, hey, I'm getting pretty good at this, and then I would always try extra things. And then I, um, and then in high school, um, not even high school, probably before that. I think I was in high school, like probably grade nine or grade ten. I've there was a video game that came out called Funk Master Flex. Beat maker. Oh, okay, um, cool. For PlayStation, and I PlayStation. Sat, we're going way back. No PlayStation. I know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I had uh, one like, of those, like and nine, I was like, like ninety nine, nineteen ninety nine. Wow. Think. Um, and I would sit inside and I would put, I'd make beats on this video game because that's what it was really. You would get like loops or whatever and then thing together. But I was doing like, I was doing putting chords together and then like, oh, this is the bridge, and I would do like all the drums on my own and stuff like that. And it was fun to me because I knew I knew how to read. I knew how to read bars and read music and stuff like that. And then I put them on a tape. Like I recorded it onto like a tape with my dad's like stereo. Okay, cool. And I took them to school and I started playing them for people. And they're like, yeah, like sounds really good, but it sounds like a video game. And I was like, it is, but like, isn't that dope? <laughs> um, 
And then, uh, and then my friend from high school, Puneet Bansal, gave me, uh, gave me a bootleg version of Acid Pro. Um, okay. It was Sonic Foundry Acid Pro, and then Sony bought it, so now it's Sony Acid Pro. Right. But um, I got it. Then once that happened, everything just kind of fell into place. I bought a keyboard. I was, you know, obsessed. With it, you know what I mean? Like just recording and learning how to do music and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. Like it just kind of it literally just fell into my lap. Like it turned into, it went from a hobby into a like a serious hobby into like an obsession into then and, and then one day someone offered me money for my beats and I was like, what is going on? And That's then, awesome. <laughs> and I was like, hold on a second. I really like doing this. I could do this forever. And you know, and then lo and behold, I you know I got a call from G Unit and then it's just been like a roller coaster ever since. Good for you, man. Up. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. <laughs> um, so I want to talk a bit, talk a little bit about um, about. Uh, I almost want to say I I don't think writing is the right word, but when you writing a beat, composing, making, yeah. mixing, yeah. writing. You can say writing. Okay, so <laughs> so we'll use writing. Uh, take me through the process. Like what what's going on in your mind when you're thinking about, and then when you're write when you're writing out a beat. Like how, um, what 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 happens there? Honestly, like. <laughs> There, there's no process. Like, it's not like I sit down and I'm like, okay, I gotta do. It's not like you're doing heart surgery and you gotta do like a bunch of procedures first. Yeah, like, yeah. It's not like, it's really a lot less complicated, I guess, when people than people say it is. Whenever I have an idea, I'll like write it down. I mean, nowadays I, I mean, I do it so much or whatever that I kind of like memorize my ideas right. until I get to like until I get to the studio or whatever and I can do it or I can get my laptop and I can actually put it down. Um, it's really, it's really just, just, it's just, honestly, like, I think I'm more of, like, a right brain, you know, like, the, like, the left brain and the right brain people and the left brain yeah, people yeah. are, like, really good at math and, like, memorize things, like, right when they see it and stuff like that. Yeah. And then there's the right brain people, I guess, that are terrible at math, like me, but are really creative yeah. and, like, are really, like, I guess they're more, like, people, like, people, people, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, um, fair enough. They've, I don't know, I just, I learned that in school, I think, somewhere. But I think I'm more of the on the creative side, so I'm always thinking of crazy ways to make beats. Like I'll, I remember one time I was with I was with D, Music by D, right? Yeah. Watching a movie. Todd Sweeney was the name of the movie. It's a musical with John with Johnny Depp. Right. Okay. And uh, is that that's the barber the barber movie? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And there's a part where he's taught where he gets his he gets uh, back to his place or whatever, and he pulls out his like these blades, or whatever, because he's a barber. Yep. And there's a song, there's this orchestra like going on in the background. And I'm just like, what is that? Like, sounds so good. So, for weeks, I was looking on YouTube, looking on Google, trying to find the music right. for this movie so I could take it and just warp it kind of and make a beat out of it. Um, and then I found it. I made the beat that day, and I sent it out, and it sold in like two hours. Awesome. You know what I mean? So yeah. it was just like, there's no process. You know what I mean? Like, I'll, I'll leave here right now. And hear a song on like the, a classical radio station, and go home and download it and make a beat out of it. Or I'll just be sitting at home playing my piano, and stumble across something that I think sounds dope, and I'll put it down and then add to it, and that'll be another beat. Fair enough. And then there's sometimes where like I don't sit down and play anything. Sometimes I'll be listening to just drum patterns or or just sounds. Um, I'll be listening to like you know Arabic drums or African drums or something, and I'll put it together and I'll be like, oh, that sounds crazy. And then I'll add to it and then it'll turn into this beat. So there's really no process. It just kind of, whatever happens, happens. Fair it's enough. like throwing paint on a wall and saying like, you know what I mean? It's just, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I make a beat and it sucks and I delete it. <laughs> and then sometimes I don't think I'm going to make any beats that day and I make seven and five of them are great. Right on. You know? So I don't know. Um, so I want to ask you a little bit more about how you... How you became uh, how you became like well known in the like how how you first were discovered I guess almost um, as discovered. a producer. Um, I don't know if discovered is the right word, but I think I, I think you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Okay. How did I turn this into a job, basically? <laughs> I guess, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, so um, when I was when I started making beats and stuff like that, um, that was around the time when Facebook became really popular. Right. Okay. Um, like in the early two thousands. Um, right. Yeah. 
And in Toronto, like, I guess the scene in Toronto or whatever, I was more focused on that. I really wanted to get a record on Flow, to be honest with you. That was, like, my number one goal in, like, the world at the time. And and then, um, and then once I got the record on Flow, it was really easy for me to, like, go and tell artists, hey, like, this is what, this is what I really want to do and stuff like that and, and tell people, like, really good musician. I like making music and stuff like that. And, um... Sorry, I just forgot the question. <laughs> like how, you, I guess how you, um, t to use your words, how, how this became a job yes. for you. Okay, so I got on Facebook. I started, I guess, adding like a lot of the local artists and stuff like that on on Facebook. And, hey, like I, I make beats or whatever. Are you listening? Are you willing to listen to my stuff? And I just kind of like started grasping bigger artists, getting in touch with them, getting bigger artists and bigger artists and um, getting the music. And then... Um, and then once, like, I guess once I did the, once I guess once G Unit called me or whatever, and I did right, the Summer yeah. Snitch record for Tony Ayo, that was when people started paying attention. I started hosting parties, and like, you know, the clubs enough. would pay me to just like to show up, like, you know what I mean, and, and like just to get a bunch of people on the guest list or whatever. And a lot of people had a lot more faith in my music career, including my parents and including my friends, and stuff like that. So it was really like, I don't know, like I. It never really got crazy until I started using Twitter. Right, okay. Um, that was when, like, now nowadays it's like I have, I constantly have ANRs from major record labels hitting me up um, on a regular basis. Like, like, the ability for me to, like, go out, I guess you can say, and find people, track people down and stuff like that. Like, once I, I guess, mastered Twitter, it was, like, a lot easier. Like, the majority of the business that I get now isn't even in Toronto. Right. Okay. Like I barely, I barely do records here unless I really, 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 really want to do it. Right. Um, just because the scene here is a lot smaller, or whatever. It obviously makes more sense to go to the states and work mm -hmm. because they're ten times our population, and yeah, it's just a way better market over there for music. Um, if you want to do, you know, if you want to do this for the rest of your life, I guess you could say. Yeah. But um, but that's the. Thing. It's like it's kind of weird. Like I, it just, I just kind of fell into it. I guess you could say I didn't really. I found a. I guess you could say like I found a niche or whatever in, mm -hmm. in Twitter. Right. And, okay, well, I'm just going to follow people on Twitter that follow other people on Twitter. Like, I would go and find people that have, like, a good follow-to-follow -follow back ratio, I guess you can say. Like, yeah. if they have 300 followers, they're following 300 people kind of thing. And yeah. I would follow those people on Twitter. Um, And then it just grew and grew and grew and grew. And then I was like, um, I actually had two Twitter accounts. One was just a basic, like, my just regular J staffs. And then I had a Team J staffs. Team J staffs had, like, 30,000 followers. Regular J staffs had, like, 1,500 the 1500 or whatever was just local artists in Toronto stuff like that right yeah the team J staffs was just people that follow other people on Twitter that I have no idea who I am I never <laughs> used to use that account right yeah and then I deleted the regular J staffs I changed the team J staffs to just the regular J staffs basically so I replaced it got rid of the other one the yep. smaller one um, and I started tweeting about my music and then I had people from everywhere hitting me up just Australia and Africa and the UK and like stuff like that you know what I mean so it was just like I never thought like it would get to the point now where almost every single time I leave my house I get recognized now like it's like now now my following like the majority of my followers now live in Toronto right okay which is kind of cool um when I it's so funny when I follow people from Toronto they always message me back and they're like yo J Staffs is following me like they get really excited this That's guy cool. even on the way here this kid tweeted me from Toronto he's like uh, he's like you're my idol like you know what I mean like that's that's yeah. crazy like a couple of days ago I went to the I went to uh, I went to a club and these, <laughs> I was standing in line. I have these sweatshirts, these crew neck sweatshirts. Okay. That say uh, at J Staffs, like it's like my Twitter on my shirt. I'm like a walking billboard, basically. Fair on enough. My Twitter account. Okay. And I walk in the club or whatever, and these and and these girls, this one girl was just staring at me or whatever. She's like, uh, she's like, I don't know. She's looking at me. I'm looking at her. She's looking at me. I'm looking at her. I'm like, what's going on? Okay. Like, I don't know who she is, but she's looking at me like looking at her friend, looking at me, looking at her friend. She walks up to me. She's like, I'm following you on Twitter. Okay. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's like that's crazy to me, and that happens so much now. Almost every single time I go anywhere, I get recognized. Especially if I have my, especially when I have like those sweaters on. It's like I'm not like a household name or anything now, right. but like it's like it's pretty crazy. Like I never thought that I would get recognized in public out of you know just be walking down the street and be like people honking and seeing J staffs like like weird stuff. Like that's awesome. So know. what you're saying is I have to make like at Radio Nation t-shirts and just basically, start wearing those okay. basically but it's like it's it's kind of weird with me because i never 
I never did it because I wanted like I never did it because of that. I want I did it because I figured, hey, if people got Twitter, they'll follow me, whatever. Yeah, fair enough. And then one time I went to the mall or whatever, and this girl tweeted, "Oh, I just saw J Staffs," and I'm like looking around like, "Yo, what the heck?" Like, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, somebody I don't even know. Like, you know, it's just that trips me out. Uh, and I was gonna ask, like, how, and how do you, how do you deal with that with being recognized? Uh, a lot of the places you go and like what, like um, what does that what does that mean for you? What does that do for you? There's a lot for my ego. <laughs> um, there's a lot for my ego. Um, it's like, I don't know. I kind of, I really appreciate it. You know what I mean? Like whenever I meet, like whenever I meet people that are like, oh my God, you're like, you're, you're J staff. So I'm like, like they're like really excited about like meeting me. Like that's right. like, that, that is like the craziest. That's the, it's the best feeling to be honest with you. Like it's such a good feeling. And a lot of people, I guess, don't really appreciate it. I guess a lot of big artists don't really appreciate it because they get it. Like, I guess it comes so easily to them or whatever. But, right. Yeah. But with me, like, when I was growing up, like, I was, like, not the coolest kid in the school. Like, I was not. I, was, mm -hmm. I had bad grades. I was, you know, I had really bad direction and stuff like that. I didn't pay attention. I probably would have skipped a lot of school if I could, but I went to a private school, so it was really, I guess, hard or for, harder for me. Um, and I didn't have a lot of friends, like, you know what I mean? Like, girls used to treat me like crap. Uh, like guys used to beat me up, push me in lockers, really, yeah. call me names. Like I was bullied like to the extent of like just not even wanting to be around. Like you know what I mean? Like and to go from that to people coming up to me and asking to take a picture with me is like, like I appreciate it. You know what I mean? I would yeah. never go and tell people like ah, like you know what I mean? I sometimes I get upset or whatever. People will say stupid things to me on Twitter and I'll be like uh, like uh, I just want to like you know be like ah you're nothing like you know what i mean like i don't want to <laughs> say that but like that's kind of how it's not how i feel but it's like it's i've never been able to tell anybody that and yeah. and be right <laughs> because yeah. when i was growing up i was so like i was not the coolest kid i was like i was the i was the black kid on the basketball team that played no games like they would put me on when we were already down by 30 and i would sc i scored two points all season like i was that bad, you eh? take a loser like the Webster's dic the dictionary definition of loser, and I was just I was that kid, and then like to go from that to like you know, five years later I'm working with the like the biggest rap, or the biggest rap label in like the music business. It's like, it's unreal, man. Life is crazy. That's all I gotta say about that. That's awesome. Life is crazy. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about um, about your work with. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, with major record labels, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more about social media. We'll talk about what you look for in musicians and mm -hmm. other fun stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But between now and then, we're going to play some music for you. Uh, okay. Again, you can follow us on Twitter at Radio underscore Nation. Follow JStaffs at JStaffs with a Z or Z if you're listening from the United States. JStaffs. Uh, so we're going to be playing... So that was the new one by D called yep. Pillow. Yeah. Uh, featuring the man sitting directly to my left, JStaffs. Hey. Hey. What's going on? Uh, not too much. <laughs> so do you want to talk a little bit about that? About that song, how you, how I uh, how you um, first got involved with uh, D? Like I met D through her cousin Ryan. Okay. Um, and that was the first song we did. Uh, she, I made the beat, I wrote the song, and recorded it in one day. Um, that song is. I don't even know really how it came about. Um. It's like I don't know. It's, it's it's back to the process topic again. You know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah. I I made the beat and then I wrote the song and then we recorded it <laughs> and then we put it out and it got like you know thousands of views and downloads and and we shot a video to it and it got twenty thousand views and sure it's like almost twenty thousand views now. Yeah. Um, and I've been you know what I mean. That's another thing that I do as well. Like I said before, I help artists like with their social networking. I help them build a fan base and stuff like that. So, um. I mean, when she started, she didn't really, I don't even think she had Twitter. Right, okay. Um, and now she has, like, 38,000 followers. <laughs> so, it's just, like, you know, like, I just kind of, I don't know. I worked with her, like, really, like, close, you know what I mean? Like, I did, we've only done a couple of records, but, um, you know what I mean? I'm kind of, like, with her more than anyone else, like, she's, like, my artist, kind of. Right, like, okay. It's not, it's not official, like, cause I'm not, like... It's not like we have paperwork. It's not like I have a label or anything. It's just like she's my kind of project, I guess you could say. That's cool. Um, 
and hopefully I get a couple more projects, you know? It's just like, it's just with her, I don't know, it's kind of like, it is different, you know? So, so how did it come about you, um, uh, I guess appearing would be the right word, how, how, like, how did that come about you appearing in the music video? What, what was that discussion like? Uh, um, well, the guy that shot the video, his name is Zach Fax. Okay. He shot a video for my brother. My brother also sings and writes his own music and produces his own music as well. My twin brother, Jive. Fair enough. Um... And we, I basically hit up my brother and I was like, hey, like, there's a video that he shot was really good. So I was like, hey, let's get the same guy. So we hit him up, he sent us a treatment, and we went to the, we, it was like a hotel, like an old, like kind of rundown hotel sort of. Okay. Um, in downtown Toronto. And we shot the video. Okay. It was like kind of like, I don't know, like we, I don't even know how we came to the point where we're like, yeah, we should shoot a video for this. But it was like right after we decided to shoot a video, like the video was out like three weeks later, kind of. Okay. You know, so it just happened. Um, yes. Do you remember when, it, when about you shot this video? Like how long ago that was? Ooh, um, November. It came out on November 28th. Okay. So it came out like the last week in November or the last Monday in November. I can't remember which day it was. Um, I believe. And... You know, I mean, it's a really exciting time. Like, I mean, I never, I've had like, I, I, I've rapped, I've done features for artists and, and rapped in their videos, but this one was like really, um, this one was the song, I guess you could say, this one was the first one that I did, I guess you can say, where I like, I wrote, produced, recorded, mixed, like I literally did, it's like, I, it's like kind of like my song-ish, yeah, but it's like enough. more but it was for her, you know what I mean? It's like, I mean, there's a lot of producers that write for like, I mean, there's, I mean, most artists don't even write their own stuff nowadays, especially the bigger artists because like they don't even have time. (laughs) Yeah. Really? Yeah, Um, I get you. Like Beyonce, like, you know what I mean? Like uh, pretty much every singer nowadays does not write unless it's like Neo who writes for other people or Carrie Hilson who writes for other people. Like, you know what I mean? Those guys. Yeah. But, um, I mean, everyone has songwriters and a lot of songwriters nowadays are the ones getting the record deals. (laughs) Right, because okay. they're like you know they're they're the ones that, that are they're the ones that are making the hits for these people so um i don't know and i like writing r&b i love writing r&b there's cool. just something about it i like rapping but i feel rapping is really like it's like you it doesn't have to be this way or whatever but like the cliche with rapping is that like you're basically telling the world how great you are yeah <laughs> but with r&b it's like really like heartfelt you're like basically showing the world how vulnerable you are and how honest you are, you know mm-hmm. what I mean, and how real you are. So, um, I don't know, I like, I like doing that. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, now, you said, you said in there that, um, that D was, I guess, unofficially your artist in a, yeah. in, in a way, that like how you've worked with her and whatnot, mm-hmm. uh, which leads into my next, uh, next little segment I wanted to talk to you about. What are, what, what are some of the things that, as a producer or as a songwriter even, what are some of the things that you look for in an artist? Um... Honestly, the my favorite artists are the ones that don't follow the trends. Um, the ones that like kind of go literally go out of their way to sound not like how people want them to sound. Right. The ones that have their own sound, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there's a lot. There's way too many rappers out that sound like their favorite rapper. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, there's too many. Like, there's so many. Like, you can listen to an artist and be like, oh, his favorite rapper is French Montana. Right, okay. Like you can tell he listens to French Montana all day in the car because when he goes in the studio, he's like French Montana Jr. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like you could tell. But like with there's a but the, the artists that I like the most are the ones that come out. They they say what they want to say. They do what they want to do. And if you don't like it, they don't care. Do you know what I mean? That's like they're more they're more concerned about just keeping it real. I guess you can say and making music that makes them feel good right. as opposed to making music that they think people are gonna like. Like, you're not supposed to make music that you think people are going to like. I don't make beats that I think people are going to like. I make beats that if I was a rapper, because I, I started out rapping initially, yep. I make beats that if I was a rapper, I'd rap on. You right, know what okay. I mean? Like, that, that's what I, that's, that's my stuff. It just so happens that the, the stuff that I like, I guess you can say, from a musical standpoint, is the kind of music that a lot of other people like, I guess, I suppose. Right. You know what I mean, I don't ever sit down and say, okay, what kind of beat does Jay-Z want? today like you know what i mean i'm like i'm gonna make beats for him you know what i mean i don't make beats i make beats for people that i've that i've worked with or whatever like more long term i make i make beats for artists or whatever that are like hey like i need you to do a project for me yada 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 if it's business or whatever then obviously i have to make what they want yeah. but it's always 
my interpretation of what they want. It's not me making – it's not like them making a – like I'm like – they're standing behind me and telling me what to do when I'm making the beat. It's never I, – I hate, I hate when I do that. I hate when I'm like sitting with an artist or whatever and they're like producing the record. And it's like – I'm like, okay, like this is what I do. So like if you're the artist or whatever, I understand that's your name going on the song and everything, but like I'm not going to sit here and tell you what to rap about. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So – um, that's just, I don't know. That's my opinion on that. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, and I guess uh, sort of on the flip side, what, what do you think, uh, people expect? Like, what do you think artists expect when they come to work with you? Like what, what can they expect? Um, I don't know what they expect. Uh, they're going to expect me to tell them honestly whether like I like it or not. That is probably like. I think that's one of the hardest parts about being a music producer is telling people like, hey, I don't know, bro. Like, <laughs> right. that is, that's hard because a lot of people take that to heart. A lot of people get angry. And that has happened a couple times, especially with like rap artists I find because they're really like, I don't know, sometimes they're pretty aggressive. Fair enough. Um, they don't really like, they don't really want to hear that. Sometimes some artists get really upset when you tell them you don't want to work with them. They take like that really personally. Right. Um, some, I guess some, I don't know. I feel like that's like the problem with like a lot of artists is like sometimes people just tell, so, I mean, if your friend's an artist or whatever, and it's like your best friend and it's like their dream or whatever, and they're really not all that good. It's like, honestly, if you're really their friend, you're going to tell them that it's just not yeah. working out. Like, you're just going to be like, yo, honestly, dude, I hate all of your songs. Like, I, <laughs> not that I hate them, but like, I would never play that on my own time ever. And like not to be a mean person that's not being mean i don't think that's being mean i think that's just saving somebody from like years of embarrassment fair enough you know what i mean because constant years i mean people like soldier boy you know what i mean i'm not gonna sit here and be like oh like if i don't like you then no one's going to like you know what i mean yeah people like a lot of artists that i just don't think are all that good like i don't think you know certain people are not i just, there's certain artists or whatever where it's like i just wouldn't go out of my way to really like hunt them down i guess you can say and work with them but yeah there's other artists where I'm just like, you know, I mean, sometimes I listen to a song and I'm like, I don't think it's all that great. And then you play it, they play it for somebody else and this person's like, oh, this song's amazing. And then, you know, it's just, um, it's very, I, got, I don't know, it, music is weird. Like, it's just, it's like art. Like, sometimes you some some person will think that a poetry is good and then another person will think of something completely different. Right. But, like, it is art, you know what I mean? It's an art form, so. Fair um, enough. My opinion doesn't count all the time, but as far as like the hardest thing to do it's that's definitely one of them and we talked a little bit about uh like what what you enjoy about working with artists and the sort of things that you look forward to but what's mm -hmm. some what's like what's a must-have what's something that like for example if i were to come to you and say i want to work with you and i want to produce a rap record what mm -hmm. what would you expect me to bring to the table um your a game <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, <laughs> i don't know like i would expect you to just say like I, I like when artists are very clear about what they want to do. Okay. Um, like, um, like, yeah, like two days ago I was working with this artist, this new artist that I just started working with, Danielle. Um, and she, like, she showed up with, like, six, six or seven records. Like, just, like, started writing, like, I think, like, maybe the night before, like, two days before. Right, okay. Like, that kind of stuff. When, I feel like you could, I feel like you're supposed to feed off of people. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm really inspired to make music and I'm working with somebody else that's really inspired to make music, then the music just comes out. Right. Like, it just comes out the way that it's meant to come out. Like, if it's great, then it's like, you know what I mean? If they're both talented or whatever and everything's cool, then that's the way that it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? But, like, I hate... What I don't like is when I work with an artist that's, like... And I can't say they're not as talented or whatever, but, like, when I work with an artist that I feel like I have to do everything... You know what I right. mean? I like the, I don't like when I when I'm like when I feel like I'm molding the artist. Right. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Because yeah. like you're supposed you're you're supposed to be your own person. You're supposed to like you know try and come up with your own concepts. Try and think like you know what I'm gonna think out of the box on this one. I'm gonna write a record about something that I wouldn't even usually do. You know what I mean? And thinking of that kind of stuff on your own and coming to, and then and then bringing it to me and then me developing that idea into you know into a, a creation. Mm -hmm. um, that's like that's that's my favorite kind of working environment when an artist is like hey i got this idea this is the concept you got to like you got to bring this into like physical form like you got to take this from in my mind 
into like you know the greatest thing that you ever heard coming out of a speaker like you know what i mean so yeah that's that i think that's the hardest part the hardest part is just finding an artist that will literally then i guess knows what they want but doesn't know what they want so much that they don't let you do your job fair enough you know and and that was gonna be my next question is that people how do you deal with people that um if i can think of a way to phrase this but like people that are so adamant about what they want that I don't. like i don't fair enough um i don't know like <laughs> I won't regard like, and this has happened a couple times in, before, like in my career. Sometimes I do it, and it's really like I shouldn't. But sometimes I work with an artist or whatever that I might not like so much for money. And I've been trying a lot, especially over the last year. I used to do that a lot, like right. a lot, because be, I mean, when I when I wasn't making any money, it was just like, uh, like I really need that, like you know that that money so that I could survive or whatever. Yeah. But it's like, you're not, but it's like, you're, you're basically going against everything that you said that you, you know what I mean? When, when you go to an interview and they're like, Oh, why do you like doing music? You're going against that. So you're basically being fake. Yeah. Which isn't really like a good characteristic yeah, no. of anything, of anybody. So I now, now more than ever or whatever, I try and work with people that I actually want to work with and not worry so much about the, the business side. Um, you know what I mean? It's good to see that it's good to see an artist, you know, kind of putting forth the effort as far as as far as like, you know, kind of trying to compensate, you know, their their producer or whatever, whether they can or they can't. You know what I mean? It's always good to see that kind of respect, I guess you can say, mm -hmm. um, for someone really like sitting down with you and spending those hours sitting, writing, listening, listening the song again and again and again, spending those hours in the studio with you or whatever so that you can shine you know what i mean it's good to be compensated i guess for that time or whatever but like it's really not about the money at the end of the day it shouldn't ever really be um if it comes it comes if it doesn't it doesn't but i mean if you're trying to if you're hiring somebody i guess you could say like if you're saying like i would if you're hitting me up and you're saying i need you to do this it's like hiring up a plumber or whatever like you know what i mean like yeah. it's obviously not anywhere close to the same kind of field but you know what i mean it's like you it's I guess it, when you have you you have to have I guess a special relationship with somebody or whatever where you know that where you believe in them so much or whatever that you think that if you just work with them this way that it'll work but it's hard to do that with somebody that you don't know right it's hard to do that with somebody that you don't know because you don't know if their work ethic is the same as yours you don't know if they're serious you don't know like you let I me mean, as far as you're concerned it's just another email you yeah. see what I'm saying so it's like a lot of artists hit me up and they're like, I'm serious, I want to do this, I'm serious, I'm serious, I'm, I'm down, uh, I, I could get a budget together, whatever, and we could work. And then it's like, it comes down to it, you sell them like, you know, a bunch of beats and you don't hear anything. Right. Anything. For over a year. Like, there's beats that I sold three years ago, I don't know what's going on with those songs. Right. And those artists will tell you to their fit, till they're blue in the face that they're the best artists in the, in the city, that they're mm -hmm. super serious about what they want to do. So it's like, you know what I mean? Like... You gotta be. You gotta be smart. You gotta have people's skills. You gotta have that street smarts. You know, so you have to know how to talk to people, stuff like that, and 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 kind of learn from people, learn how to learn. You have to basically learn somebody like very quickly. I guess you could say. Right. Because at the end of the day, it is it is business, right? So. Fair enough. Yeah. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the business side, but uh, before we do that, we're going to play a couple of songs. We're going to start off with the one that you mentioned by Danielle, mm -hmm. uh, "Get No Better." This song. This song, I sent her this beat probably like not even a week ago. Okay. Um, she, I sent her a bunch of beats actually or whatever. And she hit me up and she came and she had like a bunch of ideas and yada, yada, yada. She's like mad driven. Like she's really, really good. Her voice is like incredible. She, she sings so loud. I was telling her the other day, she sings loud as hell. <laughs> um, but she's really good. She's from my hometown, Brampton. Music by D is also from Brampton as well. Oh, okay, cool. You know what I mean? So shout out to Brampton. That's probably like the worst thing I could say right shout now. Out to <laughs> shout out to B-Town. <laughs> but um, you know what I mean? Like she, no one's heard this song. Like I, I think maybe three people, like me, her, and her grandma have heard this record. Okay, fair enough. And um, she's like super, 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 super talented. Like she's, I don't know. She's really, really good at what she does. And she wrote, like, she actually writes her own music as well. She writes really fast. I remember, when, actually, when we were doing the record two days ago, by the time I finished the chorus, she had already written, like, the entire second verse and the pre-hook. Okay, cool. And I was like, whoa. Like, it's really, I barely, I, I write fast, you know what I mean? So, like, to meet someone that writes faster than me is just cool. <laughs> like, it's just cool. Like, I don't know. I thought, I don't know. I, figured, I think she was, like, 
I think she had that like pre ready. <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, shout out to Danielle, shout out to everybody in Brampton and um Well I'm honored yeah. that I'm get I'm getting the chance to premiere this song. Yeah, it's actually it's actually kind of funny because when, when I first did it, I was like, okay, like I wasn't sure how it was gonna sound when it was mixed, and then once I finished mixing it today, I was like, whoa, like this is nice. So awesome. I just feel like showing the world. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so another first for Radio Nation, we're gonna be playing "Get No Better" by Danielle. Yeah. Pe- uh, produced by J the man, man beside me, J Staffs. Yeah. Uh, follow us on Twitter at radio underscore nation. You can follow J Staffs at J Staffs with a Z. Uh, and you can email us any uh, inquiries, questions, thoughts. Tell us how much you love us at radionation at hotmail.com. When we get back, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the business side and your website, which is coming out. Yep. But first, Daniel. And we're back. You're listening to Radio Nation. I'm your host, Andrew Phillips, joined uh, in studio by the man who produced this track, Betty Crocker. Jay hello. Staffs. What's hello, happening? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> looks like you're tweeting, so I didn't want to. I was. Okay, I don't want to interrupt. Guilty as charged. It's fine. It's okay. We do that too live in, uh, here in the studio. Um, so do you want to talk a little bit more about, about that track that we just played? Betty Crocker. Uh, I made that beat. Uh, the beat I made in, I think I did in August. Okay. Or like September. Fair enough. Um, I'm pretty good friends with Quadro Cinco. Quadro Cinco runs, uh, well, him and a couple other people, obviously, but... He's, I guess, he's the kind of the head guy at um, at G Seven Records. Okay. G Seven Records is under Universal, or, I believe, or Interscope. Well, their office is in the Universal Canada building, so I, I guess, they're under Universal. Okay. Um. Anyway. That's so, the one on Vic Park, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I sent Quadjo beats. I always send Quadjo beats, but apparently, with this beat, he really wanted it, a lot. So he hit me up and he said that he wanted it. Um. And then I had a meeting with him at the studio where I played him a bunch of other beats. And, um, you know, I, I guess got the business out of the way. And then once all that was done, they told me that initially Vado was supposed to be on the record. Okay. But then um, a couple of weeks later, I guess French Montana was in town. And they decided to put French Montana on the record okay. instead of Vado. Fair enough. So, um, so that was like really, really good. Just especially because like French is like one of my favorite rappers right now. Okay. And um, a huge fan of his music. Um, and um, that's it really. And then they came. He he just put out a mixtape as well recently, about two weeks ago. I think it got like fifty thousand downloads or something like that. Like, that's not lot. bad. He's you know he's doing pretty good. He has that he has a great push behind him. You know what I mean? And he's he's and from what I've heard, I mean I heard his mixtape. He's pretty dope. You know what I mean? So you could definitely see some more from him. I'm pretty sure I was told they're shooting a music video to that record, so I'm not really I hope they do. Okay. Um it'd be cool if they shot in Toronto. That'd be dope. But um Um that's what I heard. And right hopefully you know, hopefully I get to work with them a lot more. Um I always send them records and stuff like that. So, you know, Quadjo's are really like Quadjo's always been cool to me. Like he's always been you know, I, I a couple of years ago I I did this this mixtape called the Staff Meeting. Okay. And I had like 20 something artists on it from t- all around Toronto. Right on. All around Toronto. And I made all the beats. I wrote all the hooks. I guess you came up with the concepts. Um, and it was all basically like, you know, like my Toronto rapper friends. Right, okay. And I never met Quadjo in my life. So my friend Nikki Santoro, I told her to contact him, I guess, on behalf of me and ask him, give him my number, I guess you can say, and say, or uh, or give me his email or whatever. I can't remember how I how it all went down. This is like 2009. Right. Okay. But I basically said, okay, like I really that'd be really cool if I can get this guy because like I used to watch this guy on TV, like growing up, like saying, man, I wish I could get a record on Much Music. Like you know what I mean? Like I used to watch yeah. him kind of and be like, oh, that's so cool. They're the first Canadian rap group on BET. Really? Yeah, it was a ghetto concept. Oh, that's cool. You know what I mean? So just the fact that like you know what I mean? I got to like. Anyway, so I had a bunch of beats. I sent him a bunch of beats, and he's like, yeah, like before I even met him. Before I even met him, he's like, yeah, I don't even worry about the money. Like, don't even worry about it. He's like, your beats are dope, whatever. I heard lots of good things about you, yada, yada, yada. And then I went to the studio. I got to meet him, and and he taught me a lot. Like, you know what I mean? He's, yeah. He's taught me a lot, and he's definitely a staple in the music business. So, um, you know, so shout out to Quadjo for doing that for me. Shout out to Quadjo for consistently doing things for me <laughs> and not asking for any, uh, you know, favors like i don't know never ask you for anything back he's he's a really cool dude he's really down to earth so shout out to him shout out to lp who i also have yet to meet 
<laughs> and shout out to French, man. French is like, he's one of my favorites right now. So Cool. Hopefully he's listening in right now and the show blows up. I know, right? <laughs> That'd be I know, awesome. right? That'd be dope. That would be. Hopefully soon. <laughs> um, so you've mentioned it a couple of times, uh, both on air and off, about the business side of music and about uh, your beats being bought or sold. So I want to ask you about the process. Um, like, how does that happen? How do you go about selling a beat or how does someone go about buying it? Um, I'm always telling artists to send me music on Twitter. I'm always telling artists, like, hey, hit me up. Send me your stuff. If I like you a lot, then we'll work something out. Okay. Um, and that's usually how people. That's usually how I work. Um, a lot of artists try. I like a lot of artists hit me up and say, "Hey, like, you know, I'm working on a project. I want to get a beat from you." But I feel I don't really like doing that so much. Like, I wouldn't really want to do a beat just for someone, just so they can say they got a beat off me. Not to say that like I'm a big deal or whatever, but like, I don't want to do a beat just to do a beat. Like. <laughs> I like I'd rather work with an artist long term like what I'm doing with Music by D and what I'm doing with like you know a lot of the artists that I'm working with right now I'd rather work with them for like you know do a a couple records right you know do like f- like four or five records over the space of a month and do one record and you send me money and then I never talk to you or hear from you or right yeah do any like you know what I mean I don't help you with your like you know social networking which is like kind of like my second job now and I don't like you know you're pretty much stuck on your own as far as mixing the songs because you might not have a really good engineer. A lot of artists don't have really... A lot of your artists don't have engineers. I know a lot of rappers that mix their own stuff. Right. And, you know, I mean, they... It's a lot of them don't know what they're doing at all. But, I mean... You know what I mean? It's just like, I'd rather work with... I'd rather work with people than sell beats. I don't know, like... I'm not really... I'm not worried about my beats selling. I've been selling beats since I was, like... I'm turning 27 this year. Like, I've been selling beats since I was, like, 20, 21. Okay. Like, on a consistent basis. I, worked, I never really started making any money until last year when I got really, 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 really popular, I guess you can say, on Twitter. Yep. And then I found a way, I guess you can say, to do business without jeopardizing, you know, without selling myself out, okay. without selling myself short, mm-hmm. you know? So it's like, it's like I, I found, like, I guess, like, my my lane, I guess you can say, like, I... I like when art, I like people sending me music. I guess because that's how it used to be back in the day. Artists would go to the producers, and be like, "Hey, like, you know what I mean? Like, can you please listen to my stuff? You're a great producer." I think that's, I think that's, I feel like records are so fabricated today. Yeah. Like, especially with like hip hop and stuff like that, it's not like it's not like an artist and a producer, and then an artist and a producer, and an artist producer. It's like a hard artist, and then he works like a bunch of producers, and then when they get signed, he works like with certain producers that are hot at the time but they have no relationship i guess you can say yeah you know what i mean like they don't have a sound that it's not like you know like with the boy wonder drake you know 40 situation you know what i mean it's like they're they've been making records together you know what i mean so mm-hmm. there's that there's that love you know what i mean so right, yeah um you know what i mean and we and who knows what their arrangement was you know what i mean as far as business goes whatever like you know you never know but yeah. you know what i mean i I'd, I'd, I'd like to have it'd be better if i had that you know what i mean it you know what I mean? But a lot of the artists that hit me up, I don't really know. So, like, you right, have okay. to do that paperwork just to, like, you know, kind of solidify each side and make sure everyone's, you know, getting what they want. And, yeah. you know, making sure that they're being treated fairly and not being taken advantage of. But, you know, as, as far as the business side goes, I just try and work with people that I like. Fair enough. Um, work with artists that I like as opposed to working with people that just have money. Because, I mean, money comes and goes. You know, I'd rather put out a hot record that I didn't get paid for and then put out a really bad record that I got like two G's for or five G's for. Yeah, or, fair enough. You know, so because that record that I put out, like when I put out Pillow, mm-hmm. I yep. got a lot of business. Uh, when I got, when I put out, uh, not not business, I shouldn't say business, but I had a lot of artists hitting me up and saying right. like, yo, let's work, let's work. Can we work please? Like I love what you did with Pillow. I love what you did with this record. I love what you did with this record. That is more powerful to me than, you know, someone hitting me up and saying they want to work with me because I did a track, I did a, like two songs for G-Unit. Right, or hitting okay. me up because I did two songs with Wiz, or hitting mm-hmm. me up because I have 134,000 followers on Twitter. Like that's that's not a good reason to want to work with anybody. Like you should want to work with somebody because you like them. Fair enough. <laughs> you know, so that's my thing. And I, I guess I have to ask. Uh, maybe it just comes naturally, but how how do you build that relationship? Like how do you find out the people that you like and the people that you don't like, and how do you figure out who by you ex- want to work? By experience, like you know what I mean. Some yeah. people are just better than I guess. Cool. Some people are just cooler to me than other people, you know. Some people are just easier to work with. Some 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 artists are have talent, but they're willing to take risks. You know right, what I mean? Okay. Some artists, I guess, well, are willing to you know be more flexible. Some artists have you know, 
some artists are you know more business minded than other artists it's, it's different like i don't really have like a guideline like it's not like i have like a blueprint of the kind of artist that i want mm -hmm. i just talk to you i'll call you up and i'll talk to you and i'll listen to your music and then we'll go from there and then you know we'll do one record two records okay kind of starting to feel comfortable three records four records okay it's feeling more comfortable you know what i mean you kind of get to know them on a more personal basis as opposed to just like oh i need a beat okay well here's how much my beats cost okay well send me the beats so i can pick one okay well here's the beats okay i picked one this is the one i want okay well this is where you send the money yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean it's like it's like completely unpersonal completely it's not even making music it's like it's like you're it's buying business, my it's like yeah, you're it's buying my yeah it's yeah. like you're buying my xbox off me like there's nothing like you don't even care like you know what i mean like and then, and then and then and then obviously that's how i got into those situations where i was selling beats to people and then the songs were never coming out yeah and i don't ever 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 want to do that again i want to work with people that i like artists that i think are talented and if it works out for me then you know if i'm blessed enough to be lucky enough to you know get that hit you know what i mean then yeah. then that's perfect you know good stuff um so what do you do with beats that um well first i, sh I should i should ask are there ever any beats that uh, that you make that they don't get used yep tons got like 90 something of them right now right on but uh <laughs> it's it's kind of like what becomes of them like what do you like what I ends up happening to them honestly if a if a beat sits in my catalog I guess you could say for like more than like a year yeah, <laughs> or like six. It might be just in my catalog that I thought was dope, I guess, when I made it. And then maybe a couple of months later or whatever, after hearing it to myself uh, my, my, on my own, I guess, a couple of times or whatever. Or maybe it's just a beat that, you know, the artists that I'm working with at the time don't really like. I won't delete it, I guess you could say, but I'll just kind of like, I don't know. I guess I'll put it to the side. I mean, I got beats from like 2000 and. 2009 that right. like, I'm still shopping you know what I mean so it's yep. like I don't know it's not like I delete them or whatever I just kind of like the newer stuff that I make that I'm really really confident about I guess you can say that's like more of I guess that's more modern to mm -hmm. today's sound or whatever than you know because I mean the beats that I made when I was in like the beats that I made five years ago compared to the beats that I make now it's like a different producer right yeah fair you know enough. what I mean so I, I don't know I don't delete them but I don't keep shopping the ones that I that I guess aren't getting picked or whatever but um nowadays I'd, I guess nowadays it doesn't really matter so much because now I work so closely with artists that I just make beats that they want like like when I work with D she'll just say I need a beat like this or I'll, I need or I want to do a record like this and we'll just do a record like that as opposed to her like supposed to be sending her 100 beats and saying all right you're screwed pick like yeah you know what I mean? like <laughs> it's more personal like it's more I like that though right um, so let's switch gears a little bit and talk about uh, jstaffs.com. Oh, jstaffs.com, I'm doing that right now. It's literally in the process of being designed as of like two days ago. Right, okay. Um, the release, I'm doing a release party actually for it on March 24th at Loki. Okay. So if you're not doing anything and you want to come party and get drunk for free, then come and do that. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it should be fun. But the site is more like I had a jstaffs.com before, like probably like four years ago, but okay. I didn't. I wasn't making any money four years ago, so I didn't really have, like, I didn't have proper web design and stuff like that, and I didn't have, you know, I didn't have, t there wasn't Twitter four years ago, so I didn't yep. really, like, that, I didn't really, I didn't have the means, I guess you could say, of promoting it properly and and monetizing it, I guess you could say. Right, okay. Um, so, it's more of the style of a blog or whatever, but you can basically find, like, all the new J Staff stuff. It's got my bio. Every record that I produce is going to be coming out there. Okay. Um, the J Staffs, the you know the J Staffs sweatshirts or whatever, I'm going to be selling on there as well. Um, and the piano is playing you know again. I mean? And the piano is playing again. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Like all, I guess all, everything that I do is going to be more on that. I used to have a Tumblr or whatever I built, but I felt like a Tumblr was kind of limited because you can only do so much stuff on Tumblr if you don't have a Tumblr account. Right. Okay. You know what I mean? It's like it's like YouTube where you can only do so. You can't subscribe to a YouTube channel if you don't have a YouTube account. And yep. it's kind of like that on on it's kind of like that on on uh, on Tumblr as well. Like you can't subscribe, I guess you can say to a Tumblr account unless you have a Tumblr. Right, okay. But I wanted a website where people can go and have that I guess a blog experience where I can upload stuff on my own. Uh like you know what I mean? I could have people send me questions or whatever. It has like a contact page so right. now I don't have people asking me all the time what my email is on Twitter like and I can just be like, "Okay, well here's my website." go ham everything's there like <laughs> yeah, everything okay. my bio like with pictures videos interviews whatever fair enough yeah. um so just got got a couple more for you um what are some of the big 
uh, maybe roadblocks, obstacles, whatever metaphor you want to use here. But what are some of the challenges that you're facing right now uh, as a producer? Right now, um, keeping up. It's probably like <laughs> keeping up and trying not to fall asleep in the studio and stuff like that. Like it's just, I'm more busy now than I've ever been in my life. Fair enough. Like, I'm more busy now. I have so much. Like I'm getting emails right now of people asking me for beats. You know, like it's just, it's like it's constant, constant, constant. I get three thousand mentions a day on Twitter. That's crazy. You know what I mean? Like it's all day long, nonstop. Like I'll wake up in the morning and I have over a hundred, two hundred, three hundred tweets from like me sleeping for six hours. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I just don't un- like it's just crazy. So um, nowadays, like the hardest thing is just to keep up with my Twitter. Like, the- and then even after I check my Twitter, I got two hundred emails. Like right, you know yeah. what I mean? And then after I check that, I gotta make beats. And then after I do that, I gotta call. Like you know what I mean? I gotta I gotta check in with my man. I have two managers. Like. You know what I mean? Like, I have a Canadian manager and a, an American manager. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, and then I, and then I usually do a lot of my bookings on my own. So when I do party bookings, I got to do that. When I do interviews, photo shoots, video shoots, studio bookings, I do all of that, like, literally, right, okay. like, on my uh, own, I guess you can say. So, um, yeah, the hardest obstacle right now is just, like, time. I have, like, literally no social life. Um, my social life is Twitter. Fair enough. Which is like sad is it's fun but it's sad. <laughs> uh it's like I don't know, like it's just that's the hardest part. This is definitely keeping up with my own life, I guess you could say, and keeping up with people. And answering my phone. Oh yeah, that too. And writing people back. <laughs> that's funny. Busy, busy, busy. Uh so last question really, the last serious question uh, anyway, is where do you see yourself five years from now? I want a Grammy. Grammy? Mm-hmm. That'd be awesome. Like, I want a Grammy. Um, if it doesn't happen, it'll be cool. I'll be all right. I'll probably have, like, 900,000 followers on Twitter anyway, so, like, I don't <laughs> really care. Like, the way I look at it is, like, okay, well, if the music thing, like, I always make music. Like, whether, like, people ask me what, like, I said this in another interview as well. It's like, people ask me what I would be doing if I wasn't doing music, and I'd be doing music. People would be like, oh, what if you weren't doing producing music? And I'm like, I'd be at home making music about how I tried to make music and it didn't work out. <laughs> like, Fair enough. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what else. I'm not really, I'm literally not good at anything else. Like, like I dropped, I, all, I barely graduated college. I, I barely graduated high school. I dropped out of college twice. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, it's just the, it's the only thing I think about. It's the only thing I worry about. It's, you know, it's like I eat, breathe, sleep music all the time, all day. Like I go out and stuff, party with my friends, but the friends that I party with are artists. Right. They're they're producers. They're engineers. They're they they're stylists. They're they're all creative junkies. Like you know what I mean. So right. Um, and I just like I don't know. That's that's really what I. That's really my main thing. Like I don't know. Like I don't know what else I would be doing if I wasn't doing this. I always ask myself that. I'm like, where would I be? Like if I wasn't doing this interview right now, what would I be doing? Yeah, basically. Like what? Like I'd probably be like getting off work or something. Yeah. Or like home sleeping or whatever. I don't know. Like I don't know. It's just it's, it's a weird question. Fair enough. Uh, So that's really – that's that's it for the serious questions. We do a little thing here on the show. It's called the speed round, essentially where I just throw a bunch of random questions at you. Oh, man. It, it's fine. Most of them are yes or no or they're like one-word answers. So okay, don't go. Yeah, don't, so don't stress it. <laughs> Uh, it's usually it's a lot more fun when we have two or more people here because then we can get you to compete against somebody. But uh-huh. it's just you, so I'm just going to throw these <laughs> questions at you, and we're just going to nice. see. Nice. I'll try and make happens. it as interesting as possible. I'd appreciate it. Uh, so this is the speed round. My name's Andrew. You're listening to Radio Nation. So Jay Staffs, what what's your favorite color? Red. Why red? I look good in red. I don't know. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't know. I like black. I like. I like. Honestly, I like all the colors. To be honest with you. Um, but I really, really, really like red. Fair enough. What uh, What was your first car? Whew. A 1987 Volvo 740 GLE. Nice. Do you still drive it? Oh, no. I drove that thing into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it used that's, to belong. <laughs> that's so awesome. funny. If my dad was listening to this, he'd laugh. <laughs> well, what happened? It was, I don't know. It, it was my dad's car first. 
my dad like he had this he, it was so like dope when he got it i remember he put rims on it and he put a system in it and had like leather seats and like a sunroof and i, I thought it was like the coolest fastest dopest thing on wheels when i was growing up like that car was like i remember being i remember being like seven and then and then like in just sitting in the back of the car whatever with the windows down and my dad blasting soca music like on the highway <laughs> like you know what i mean just enjoying life enjoying the you know summertime stuff like that right on and uh, there's so many memories in that car like wow and then when i got my license my dad took me out to drive that car um, like teach me how to talk to because it was stick it was a five speed. Okay, so my cool. dad taught me how to drive it. This is so not even a fast question, but, <laughs> but like he taught me how to drive it or whatever. And like, it's just a trip. Like I just remember the scene, the look on my dad's face. Like he's like, yo, I used to drive you when you were a baby. Like when you were like five, like you weren't even like, you didn't even really know how to talk too much. I guess really. I was a child, like I sitting in the back seat in like, you know, in my like little baby seat ish yeah, thing. Yeah. And now it's like I'm driving it. <laughs> it's just kind of funny, I guess you could say. But then I, I don't know. And then like I drove it everywhere. Drove it to London. Drove like I just put mad miles on it. I think it had like almost 400,000 kilometers by the time I was done with that thing. And the door panels were falling off. The windows were broken. The trunk didn't work. The radio didn't work. The heat didn't work. That's like, funny. We'd go through tires like crazy. <laughs> like it's just I would drive that thing into the ground. I got pulled over so many times in that car. Speeding? Just everything, like, <laughs> that, like for having for having a dirt doing donuts, like just crazy stuff. Like I was just a bad kid in that car. Like it was just because I don't know. That's funny. I don't know, man. I got like just like I got pulled over for having a dirty license plate. The windows were tinted, like just blasting music in like quiet, nice neighborhoods for no reason at all. I don't know. Like it's just <laughs> everything, was, everything they could pull you over. Everything they did. that I think everything just for my seatbelt for the everything. Everything. I got so many. I paid so many tickets in that car, man. I don't even. And now it's so funny because now I have a driver. It's like I don't even miss drive. I I don't even really. I honestly don't even really miss driving. Now really? I sit at home because now I sit at home all day and I make beats. Like, you know what I mean? The grocery Fair store, enough. the doctor, like the, my doctor's office in the bank is like across the street from my house. So it's like I don't really have to drive anywhere. That's not bad. Like I wake up and I walk like four feet and I'm at work. <laughs> you know. So I don't know. I'm a little jealous. Not gonna I don't lie. know. It's like a good hour. It's, you know what's really funny? Because there's probably a lot of people listening to this and saying like, "Oh, like Jay Staffs must be like have so much money and yada yada yada." And on, like to be completely 100 percent honest with you, like I never really started like benefiting from this until like last year. Really, like actually benefiting to the point where like I just didn't have to work or whatever. But like people will say, "Oh, like you must be rich. What's it like to be rich?" It's like, like one of the things that my one of my favorite producers in the world, Pharrell. He said that wealth is of the mind, right? Yep. I feel like I'm rich. Like I literally wake up every single day whenever I want and do whatever I want all day. That to me is better than having a job and making 500 grand a year. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. No, it's, better than, it's better than waking up every single day and going to a place where you work and you hate it. You make good money, but you hate it. I remember, my, I remember one time I met a doctor and he broke down in front of me crying. He drives a Porsche, has two houses. Like, you know what I mean? He has money. You know what I mean? But he hates his job. He hates his job. He loves playing the guitar. There you go. You know what I mean? Like, I've worked this or whatever so that I'm at the point now where I can, you know, live, I guess, off of what I do. And I don't care how much money I make. Like, really, like, now it's just I don't even care. I used to be so concerned about that. I used to chase rappers down for like 80 bucks. Yeah. Call off people's phones and be like, where's my money? Where's my money? Where's my money? I need it. I need it. I need it. And now it's like, now that I've, I guess, successfully found a way to make it work for me, I don't care. I don't care at all. I give beats away for free all the time. I used to have a slogan, only your girl gets free beats. I have that on a t-shirt. Do you? Yeah. That's funny. I was a jerk, man. I was <laughs> bad. I was used to, you know what I mean? I used to cuss rappers out on Twitter and Facebook and be like, oh, where's my money? Yeah, you rap about money. You don't even have any, yada, yada, yada. And it's just like, I, I don't know. It's just, it doesn't matter so much. When you, I feel like, here's the thing. I feel like when you have money, it doesn't matter. And when you don't, it matters to like, it matters so much. But that's like with anything. You yep. know what I mean? But I don't think that should be anyone's driving force to do anything. And you know what? I think four and a half minutes is the longest answer we've ever had in the speed round. Thank you. <laughs> you follow, follow me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Staffs, I talk too much. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, we were talking about it when we were off there. Believe me, it's not a problem at all. 
Uh, so getting back to the speed round briefly, anyway, what is your favorite food to eat? Wow. Chicken. Chicken? Prepa- at any specific way prepared? I don't even know. Honestly, the Longos across the street from my house has the greatest, like, baked chicken, and every Wednesday they're half price. So I like chicken. Right on. Uh, I like cheesecake. I love wine. This is going to be a long answer, too. Okay, that's cool. I love cool. wine. I love cheesecake. Everyone that knows me knows that I love wine. I go to the club with, like, my friends, and I get bottles of wine. And everyone's like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, I'm a wino. Like, I love I love wine. I love tasting wine. That's Everywhere awesome. I go where there's a bottle of wine, I have a glass. I've had, I've had wine first thing in the morning on countless occasions. Like, before I even, like, brush my teeth, I'm drinking wine. Well, like, I'd say it's good for your heart, anyway. That's what they say. So they say, depending on how much you drink. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> depending on a glass a day keeps the heart attacks away, apparently. So I've heard. But I don't know. I don't know how true that is. Um, but I love that. I love wine. I love pasta. I like a lot of things. Cool. But like, you know what I mean? If you bring me a bottle of wine, like a whole chicken, and like a New York style strawberry cheesecake, I'm going to be your best friend <laughs> forever. For life. I wish I had known that coming into this interview. Exactly. I would have I would have hit up the grocery store on the it's way. Okay, out. only few people know that. Only the people that show with me every day know that. And, and my, everybody and, listening in right now. And everybody that's following me on Twitter, which is basically a lot of people. I guess. Fair enough. Yeah. Right on. Do you yeah. cook at all? Nope. I'm really good at making scrambled eggs though. Okay, cool. That, I'm, that was do- your next I'm dope question. at scrambled eggs. I can cook. Honestly, I can cook. I don't have time. Fair enough. I can. I can make, I've like, you know what I mean? My mom taught me how to cook. I can cook like, you know, rice, chicken, pasta, mashed potatoes, like veggies. Like I can cook, but it's just like, I don't know. It's just like, by the time I'm hungry, by the time I finish doing what I want to do, I'm so hungry that I don't want to spend an hour looking at food. (laughs) Right on. You know? Yeah, no. That's it. That's my answer. Xbox or PS3? Uh, I, I've, I've been, I've had PlayStation forever only because I'm a giant friend of Gran Turismo and Metal Gear Solid. Um, I've, I've played Xbox a couple times. Um, but now I don't have time to play video games. <laughs> so if I had to choose my childhood system was PlayStation, if I had PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, before that I was a giant Sega head. I had Sega Genesis, Sega Master System 2, Sega Saturn. Right. You know what I mean? I was a huge video gamer when I was growing up. I was a huge, like, huge nerd, like, to the T. But they say that if you're not, they say that if you're, if they, they say that if you're a nerd and you say that you're a nerd, that you're a poser. But I was actually a nerd. That's funny. <laughs> Did you ever watch any of the Star Wars movies? Nope. Oh, you should. I'll what? get on that. Please I've do. always wanted to. I should do that. Do. I'm going to do that tonight. You should. I'm going to drink a glass of wine and watch Every single Star Wars. I'm just kidding. You're gonna need one. <laughs> you're gonna need more than one glass of wine. Uh, There's okay. six of them, and they're all like two and a half hours long. You gotta send me the list because I will actually. Well, I've never watched Star Wars. Like I, I've, for, I've watched them. Like I maybe I think I watched one, but like, I've never really been into like really, 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 really into Star Wars. Do you play? Blu- do you have Blu-rays at all? Like, can you play Blu-rays? Yeah, PS3. Duh. Duh. Right. I was gonna say, that was my <laughs> that was like my big Christmas present this year that I like went off when I got it. It was a Blu-ray set that they sell it. It's all six Star Wars movies. On Blu-ray? Yeah. Remastered? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. So you have Sick. to go pick. You have to go pick that up at some point. Believe me, your life will be changed for the better. And if it's not, you can write me an angry tweet about it. Deal. If I don't like Star Wars, your Twitter life is over. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Not just mine personally, but the shows as well. <laughs> I won't. Yeah. Do, I won't ruin the show. I'll just ruin your. <laughs> just life. ruin mine. I guess you should shout out my own Twitter. You can follow me at Eldest Tulip. Yeah. Yeah, I'll shout you out. Don't worry. Okay. Cool. You'll get a couple of uh, teenage girls following you. <laughs> Excellent. That's exactly what I need. Exactly. That's what everybody needs in life. Getting. <laughs> Getting harassed by teenage girls. Yep. It's fun sometimes. I'm not sure where the next question is in the speed round is. I once had a list, but I've lost it. So it's kind of basically what comes to know. mind. What was the last movie you saw in theaters? Wow. Um, the new one with uh, Denzel Washington. Uh, what's Safe it called? House? Yeah. Yeah. It's okay, so right on. Good. I was going to ask, how is that? It looks really, really good. good. I love when Denzel Washington is the bad guy. He's so, like, Training Day. Yeah. Amazing, right? Yeah. So, no, like, absolutely. when Denzel Washington is the bad guy in a movie, you have to go see it. He's so convincing. So convincing and compelling. I was at, uh, had a rule. It was him and, um, oh, my God, I can't think of his name now. Gary Oldman. If a Gary yeah. Oldman touches a movie, 
it's gold. Like, just go, just yeah. go see like it. Yeah, certain actors, I didn't really like Man on Fire so much. I loved Man on Fire. I, I like John a, Q. Because he was bad. Yeah, he was like, was the, a, he was like the crazy was dad. Movie. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, like, when he's a bad guy, he does the best, 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 best work. I but think. John Q was a funny movie because he was a bad guy, but not a bad guy. Like, as it, was as, kind of, it was kind of topsy-turvy, but he was yeah. more bad than good. Yeah. Like that or whole he, was stuff, bad, like, he was bad for good reasons. Yeah, you know what I mean? So yeah. he, it was like he was forced into being bad, but he was still bad. So I like when Denzel Washington is like the evil doer and like the cops are trying to stop him and like, you know what I mean? Yeah, so like take those, notice, Hollywood. Yeah. When, he, <laughs> when Denzel Washington is playing an evil like doer in a movie, I have to go see it. I have to go see it. Like when I saw Pelham, I think it's called Pelham One Two One Two Three. One, two, three. I, yeah. I didn't like it so much. Yeah. I don't like it so much. But when he's ba- like, and then you watch have Training Day. Have you seen Book of Eli? Because Gary Oldman's in that one, and he, and he yeah, kicks but he ass. Ki- but he kills a lot of people. Yeah, he he kicks ass in that yeah, movie. He kills a lot of people, so that movie was dope. That yeah. movie was dope, but not as good as Training Day, obviously. Yeah. And John Q was the classic. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, I love that and movie. Safe House, you have to go and see that if you haven't seen it. You have to. It's so good. Fair enough. So good. Well, that brings us to about the end of the speed round, and it's we're we're coming up on nine thirty, the end of the show. All right. So. I have to ask you if there's anything I haven't haven't asked you or anything you want to say, any shout outs, anything like that. I wanna shout out I wanna shout out Apprentice, I wanna shout out Music by D. Um I wanna shout out my family. I wanna shout out every single one of my followers on Twitter. You guys have literally changed my life. Thank you so much. Um I'd like to thank Radio Nation. <laughs> Follow them on Twitter, twitter.com slash radio underscore nation. Yep. Yep. Um, who else would I like to thank? I'd like to thank my, uh, I'd like to thank my piano teacher all through high school, Michelle. Shout out. What up? I'd like to thank Puni Bantal for giving me a bootleg program so that I can make a living <laughs> 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 and turn this into a job. I'd like to thank, um, wow. I'd like to thank everybody that grew up on Williston Crescent back in the day. Right on. Brampton. What up? I'd like to thank, um, like who else? Wow, I like to thank all the people that I went to college with, that I skipped school with to make beats. Hence my dropout. <laughs> uh, I like to thank uh, I like to thank my parents, man. Like they're, you know what I mean. They're the reason mostly. My dad is like you know, you know like my parents were really adamant. I guess you could say when it came to piano lessons. Um, I remember the t- I remember all the times I wanted to quit. So many times I wanted to quit. Right on. And, like, my mom was just like, no, uh, you've been playing for six years. Uh, you're not going to quit. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Um, so thanks for that. I also want to thank, thank God, man, really and truly. Um, I want to thank my new manager, Chris Young. Shout out to Chris Young, Young Management. What up? Um, doing big things nowadays. Um, who else? That's about it. I think I got everyone. Cool. I'd like to thank who else? Uh, everyone at Brampton Christian Academy High School. Um, and now I'm just gonna start starting out random people. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Man. <laughs> uh, how much time we got? Two minutes. Yeah. Who else want to shout out? Um, 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 um. Minute and a half. Minute and a half. Okay, <laughs> go. Uh, I'd like to thank. I'd like to thank Mrs. Ricketts, my grade eight homeroom teacher, for like setting me straight I guess you can say mm-hmm. um, I'd like to thank Mrs. Marinick my high school music teacher for teaching me about key progression even though I didn't really listen and I didn't learn anything about it until later <laughs> thanks for trying I totally understand where you're coming from now uh, that's it man cool that's it alright uh, well my name is Andrew I'm sitting here with uh, Jay Staffs a soon to be legendary producer yeah representing uh, Mississauga and Brampton Ontario and Brampton, the whole Peel region all of Toronto basically representing Peel yep which I, I don't know if we should be fighting since right now I'm currently representing Durham. That's I think, totally I, okay, man. I, I think we're cool, though. I like Durham people. They're cool. Right on. Uh, <laughs> next week, we have a uh, band from Toronto. They're called Fifth Project. Uh, so make sure you listen in to that. Uh, listen in for that, rather. Uh, we're going to be starting off Musician's Madness. Uh, there's a few of you out there who know what I'm talking about. So, a bunch of you who don't. So tune in next week. We'll have more details about that. Uh, we're playing a whole bunch of great music. Uh, I sincerely, I want to thank you, Jay Staff, for coming in tonight and yeah. spending the last two hours with me while I yeah. while I bar- just berate you with questions. It's totally okay. <laughs> um, I want to thank Nick Pescott, who uh, launched Radio Nation, who I know is listening in from Vancouver right now. Uh, the countdown is on, about another two and a half months until he's back, so look forward to that. 
Uh, and I want to thank all of you out there who are probably just more so are fans of J-Stats than fan of, fans of Radio Nation, but all the same, the numbers look good for me. Thanks for listening into Radio Nation. My name is Andrew Phillips, and I will see you guys next